Hey friends, I'm Tony Powers, instructor at the Pathfinder School. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to skin a raccoon. We got a big one here, and I can't really take credit for this. Uh, I let my son set this trap yesterday. Of course, I walked him through it, and I actually set the, the uh, Minnesota brand 550 myself, but I, you know, he dug the hole, he set the trap and everything. So this is his raccoon, and it's a big one too. The best time to skin wildlife will be immediately after you dispatch them. This guy was on my first trap. I dispatched him. I checked all my other traps. There was no action on him. So he's been sitting probably about 20 minutes or so, and uh, he's starting to get a little stiff. You want him to be pliable and still warm and make it a lot easier. So let's get a close up on this. I'll show you how to make your initial cut, and we'll go from there. Okay, so the first cut we're going to make is called the money cut. And what we want to do is we're going to start right here at the heel and we're going to do a straight line all the way to the vent and we're going to do it on the other side here so we're just going to poke in here and it helps if you have a really sharp knife this pks camp companion is a great knife for this this guy's got some thick fur here let me turn him just a little bit i'm doing this at a little bit different angle than i normally would i would normally be right behind this guy but i want to make sure we get a good shot of this so you can see Okay, we got all the way to the vent there. We'll turn them around here. Not sure if you can see this, but we'll start here at the hill. Take a straight line all the way down to the vent. Now you can cut off the front paw here, but as you can see, all I did was just make just cut around its wrist here. And you can do the same with this. Just kind of go around. Be careful not to dig too deep because every time your blade hits bone, it's going to dull. So just keep your strop nearby. And that's it. So we got around the wrist here. So once again, heel to the vent, heel to the vent, and put a ring around his wrist there. Now we're ready to hang him up. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken about a six foot long piece of bank line and I've put a bowling knot on each side. You can use whatever loop you want, perfection loop, it doesn't really matter. But all we're gonna do is take that bowling, fold it on the main line like this. We're then going to take it's Paul. I like to get it behind that hill there. And then we come over here, grab this one, do the same thing. This sucker's heavy, man. He's a heavy one. Pretty proud of my son. Got himself a big one on his first try. He was a little disappointed that it wasn't a fox, but I'm like, hey man, baby steps, you know what I mean? Just a, almost every trapper's first animal is either like a raccoon or a possum, so. He's got nothing to be ashamed of. Okay, so that'll hold him here, and he's at a good height. And I hope you can see this, guys. I apologize if it ain't that great. But what we're going to do, these were our initial cuts, right? We're just going to put a ring around its heel right here. Go around, slice. Okay, do the same over here. And as far as knives go, just get you a really good sharp pocket knife that has a really sharp tip on the end so you can get that initial cut. Those will work fine. So what we're going to do at this point is we want to remember that we want to use our hands to actually skin these animals as much as possible and not our knife. Every time we use our knife, we risk actually putting a hole in the hide. And a raccoon is great for this because they're very fatty. They're a little bit easier than a coyote to skin. And I'm gonna show you how to do coyotes as well. Um, there's a little, you know, this is the way that you would skin most four-legged critters. Um, but there are some things about a coyote that are a little bit more difficult. And I know a few tips and tricks that'll help you along. But all I'm doing here is I'm separating the belly, but I'm using my hands. And I know this looks gross, but this is the best way to do it. All we're gonna do is just separate the belly get our hand in there and as you can see I have my hand all the way through that okay separate it from the top as much as possible grab our knife and then all we're going to do is come across the top here and just cut the top off You can probably, if you have a longer knife, you can go underneath it and just do one good cut. 
but I just like to take a little bit at a time here. I usually use just really tiny skinning blades. Okay, just like that. So we have the whole belly exposed here. And now we're gonna do the same thing near its tail. We're going to use our hands to skin. We're gonna get our hands in there, push and separate the fur from the meat. Same deal, pull this sucker, okay? Grab the leg, separate it right here. Grab the other leg, separate it right there. And then right there's the vent. We're gonna do almost the same thing as we did in the front. Just take our knife, cut on this side of the vent, straight line. Then we'll start working on the tail and I'll show you how to strip the tail here. These things are real greasy, so it's really hard to hold on to them once you get into it. But here's a, t here's a tip and trick for you. All this fat is great for your knife blades, for your handles, for your boots, anything leather. There was a question on the uh, Pathfinder Learning Center, which if you're not a member of that, check it out, the Pathfinder Learning Center. Um, somebody had asked a question about as far as preventing blades from rusting long term. Uh, in the field and this is one way to do that animal fats is a great way to keep your knives from rusting especially if it's high carbon steel like this one so that was just a little freebie I threw in there for you so we'll finish this cut right here there we go now all we're left with is this little hold on we got one little spot right there there we go this little ball of fur right here that's around its vent so what we're going to do now is just start pulling on this tail a little bit. Be careful you don't pull too hard. Now what we want to do is, what I like to do, let me get on this side here. You can see the, the tail here. What I'm going to do is I like to grab this and pinch it real tight and just make a straight line cut right down the middle. See how that's separating already? Then when you do it, just pull it a little bit and it'll come down to where that stop cut is. Same thing. Just keep pinching it and pulling it so you can see what you're doing. Down to there. We'll do it one more time. I usually like to go about halfway down the tail before I actually strip the tail off. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. Now when it comes to stripping the tail, you can buy a metal tail stripper what i like to do is just take a couple sticks and carve a couple v notches in there and then what we'll do is just take one of the sticks on one side one on the other grip it grab right here as easy as that strips the whole tail off now what we can do in this point is take our knife put our tip down into the tail just make little nicks okay we want to separate this tail because as we let this dry, we want air to get in there. So let's hopefully you can see this here. So we'll just go down here, pull it up. Take the tip of our knife, put it down there. One more little cut right here and we should be good. Okay, maybe one more, I lied to you. There we go, now that whole tail is separated. Now we just use our hands here. Ooh, if I don't fall. Use our hands as much as possible, like I said before. Now it's important to keep this guy at a comfortable height. We don't want to be lay, way down here. Let's figure out a way to raise him up a little bit. Maybe bring these bowling knots down even fur, further, or, or excuse me, higher up on its legs here. Take this, loosen up this bowling. Bring them all the way up here. And that gets them up just a little bit higher. Now, once again, we wanna use our hands as much as possible. So let's use our hands to separate all this. And you can see its front arm here. All we need to do, take our finger and poke it through there and then pull it out. Remember how I put a ring around his arm earlier? That allows it to just pop right out of there. Same deal right here. 
Use your hand to separate all this. Pull this down, get your finger in there. Use your hand here. Just pull it out, okay? So now we're getting pretty close to the head. And what I like to do, one thing that'll really help you out is I have a piece here, probably about four feet long of some thicker lime. Put a bowling knot in one end. And what we're gonna do is wrap this around, feed that line through there. And I like to put the knot on the same side as the skull. So right here's the skull. We'll put the knot right here, cinch that down, and then we'll do a marlin spike hitch. Just put a loop in the line, fold it over on the main line. And then what you can do, let's see if I can get my leg up this high. Put your leg through there, cinch that down, and then you can push down like this. Let's get that around my foot a little better. I got these muck boots on that are pretty, pretty big. So then all we gotta do, just push straight down and you can see that separating there okay and I'm not sure how well you can see this but I can tell that right here's the hide and you see this little bright white spot here that's all the connective tissue there so we want to make sure we don't cut into this hide at all so what I'm gonna do is I know the hides right here I'm gonna cut way up here and we're not pushing hard we're not putting our knife at a down angle or an up angle we're just slicing from side to side and you can just see it slowly start to separate. I'm barely touching the raccoon at this point with this blade. That's why it helps to have a really razor sharp blade. So we'll just keep going through here. Okay. And you see it slowly separating. Keep your knife up high. Now, there's this real fatty part right here of meat. That's where its ear is actually going to connect to the skull. So what I'll do is I'll just take this cut into that meat I can remove all that meat later and as you can see right there there's the ear to the same over here cut into that meat oh I messed up there that was one thing I was going to tell you not to do watch out there's lots of uh, arteries right here you want to be careful not to go too deep now we're going to have a mess but that's okay that happens now what we can do is is loosen up this line here and this is hard to do balancing i'm not really known for my balance my mom used to say that i could trip over my shadow we're gonna bring this line back up here start pulling again once again we're using our uh we're using our hands and we're using force to actually skin this animal and we're using the knife to help it along so we use our knife again we're almost to the eyes and the eyes are very tricky i'll show you how how i do it and i still mess up sometimes i mean it happens but when we get there, I'll show you. And I like using this rope because then that allows me one free hand to turn this guy. So we'll see where his, where he's at here. Keep pulling, keep that knife up high and you'll see that that just starts separating. Okay. Should be getting pretty close to the eyes and you can kind of feel where their eyes are. Should, should be right down here. So we need to go a little bit further down Put a little bit more pressure on them. Let's turn this camera, make sure you can see everything. Okay. And like I said, I'm, I'm at a strange angle here. Normally I would be right in front like this, but you can't see. So let's just keep this blade up high. And I like to make my way to its mouth here and I'll show you why. Okay, right here's the eyeball. So I'm gonna cut up real high, and this is where you're gonna dull your knife. You really have no choice. As soon as you hit bone, you're gonna dull your knife. I like to poke in there, get that out of there, and then cut down. Right here's its mouth. One thing, hold on, one thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to bring this line up just a little bit longer, or a little bit higher, excuse me. Bring it up just a little bit. We wanna make sure we keep constant pressure on there. There we go. All right, get this knife back out again. Right there's the jaw. I like to take my hand, put my hand in there. Hopefully you can see this. I'm at a weird angle here. So now I cut that jaw 
over to where the eye is and that'll really help you get a nice clean cut around that eye sometimes you can nick the eye up real bad let's see here a little bit more pressure keep pulling on them make sure my camera's showing everything here okay so we have the eye separated here we do the same thing on this side all right and then right there i pulled until i got all the way to the nose you can feel where the nose starts what we're do is cut right along there cut that off all right let's get this knife put up get this line off of my foot here get this line from around we'll turn this sucker out see how he looks my hands are freezing it's a little cold out here today but let's look at this guy there we go perfect eyes there aren't no nicks around him I'm not sure if you can see that or not got his ears got his nose and everything and that's how you skin a raccoon all right so that's pretty much it make sure you have a good sharp knife use that rope trick that i showed you it allow you to really pull on that skin that way you don't have to use your knife so much and you have a free hand to turn it um, as far as content related to this in the future i'm going to show you guys how to skin coyotes they're pretty much skinned the same way, but there is some, especially when you get around the shoulder area, it can be quite difficult. I know a couple tricks that I help you with that. And there's also another way to skin a coyote if you're wanting to keep it for a wall hanger. Sometimes I will leave the arms and paws on. It's a longer process, a little more meticulous, but uh, I'll definitely be coming out with that. So this guy is probably, since it's my son's, I'm gonna turn it into a hat for him. I made him one last year and He's grown quite a bit since then, so it doesn't fit anymore. So we'll turn this into a hat. This one's a lot bigger than the one I made him last year. I Later on in the season, I'll show you how to you know, scrape hides and, and dry them and how I tan them, whether it be chemical or brain tan. But all that'll be coming this winter. Um, still early in the season, so keep an eye out for all that. If you guys like this, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Also, check out my links below. It really helps me out. Take care. See you all in the next one.